So what puts older people at risk for depression? My hunch is this is all intuitively obvious to the casual observer, but let's reinforce, reinforce it, okay? Loneliness and isolation. I would say not a week, maybe not a day goes by in my practice where I'll see a new patient and, uh, you know, they're either alone by being widowed or they're alone from divorce or they're alone because their adult children have up and left the beautiful state of Texas, which I can't quite imagine, but there you have it, and they're isolated. And, you know, this is a clue towards treatment. You know, there are other, way, other means of treatment besides talk therapy and medicine, but certainly a treatment, if you will, is socialization. The power of relationships to heal, okay? And then the second bullet, gee whiz, I, I'm thinking about a, a, a lovely guy. Uh, he's an 80-year-old minister, very intact, but his congregation very politely and gently put him out to pasture. So he's retired. But thank goodness, he's a musician. And he was just playing up a storm until he got bumped aside by younger players. So all of a sudden, his identities as minister and musician suddenly got uh, snuffed. Okay. Number three, again, goes without saying. I mean, I think everything is worse when we're physically sick or when we're disabled. And what do we know about aging? Well, as we get older, our hearing and our vision change. They're not what they used to be. Our ability to bounce back isn't what, they used to, was it, what it used to be. Medications. This could be an entire separate lecture, but I'll just use as a, as a uh, platform. Uh, in the 1960s, there was a wonder drug for blood pressure called reserpine, and it dramatically lowered and, and kept people's blood pressure in great control. The only trouble is patients that took it soon thereafter became horrifically depressed. So there was a linkage between a medicine and depression. And we know that there are classes of medicines that are notorious for playing havoc with our mental status, uh, steroids in particular. And then loss. I mean, isn't that really the challenge of aging? You know, the leaves fall off the tree. We lose those that are important to us. I'm going to jump to the end. I, I saw a, a Vietnam veteran in his early six, mid-60s He'd been divorced a long time. I was actually treating him for PTSD and for depression pretty unsuccessfully. And then, thank the sweet Lord, somebody gave him a lively puppy. And this guy changed dramatically. He was transformed. He was a different guy. And I thought, heck with medicine. I need to go down to the Humane Society and bring in some rescue pets. And he was well until some no good stole his dog, and then he completely crashed. And then the last thing, you know, uh, talking to somebody the other day, and their comment was, I'm going to too many funerals these days. And uh, I've been to a few at, at 58, and, you know, I, I can hear the tom-toms of my mortality a little louder than I did before. And I'd love to say I'm fearless, but I'm made out of the same stuff as all of us. So, you know, I have fears about the future. And, you know, look at our uncertain times financially. And so these are some risk factors.